The top goal scorer in the Big East Conference hopes to have another productive night on his home turf. The sophomore leads the Orange men and the league with 10 goals and 24 points this season. Defending national champion Connecticut has a different agenda. Tonight, the Huskies will try to stop Johnson and the Orange's three-game win streak. Syracuse hosts UConn next. Under the lights at the Syracuse University Soccer Stadium tonight for this evening's Big East Soccer Battle between 16th ranked Connecticut and 23rd ranked Syracuse. The records overall, the Huskies 7-2-2, two two, the Cuse 6-3 in Big East Conference play. UConn is unbeaten 4-0, Syracuse 3-2 in the league. Welcome to the soccer stadium on the SU Hill along with Tad Fundelinski. I'm Ted DeLuca. Should be a great battle tonight, Tad, between Syracuse and UConn. They have a heated rivalry in Big East Conference play. Some interesting matchups most recently in this league. That's right. You can expect a quite a formidable game right to today. First of all, the uh, UConn is uh, coming up uh, in the lead in the, in the uh, Big East Conference. SU's behind them in 23rd place. BC's in 21st. The, uh, the game, you can expect uh, Kirk Johnson to be playing a strong, strong forward. And of course, you can have uh, Chris Gabondi uh, uh, playing a forward for, uh, defense for the, uh, for the UConn. The UConn Husky is a team that has an outstanding defense, and they also have some fine players on offense as well. Let's talk about one of their key players right now, Tad. He is Damani Ralph. Well, this guy is a really strong player. He had taken the place of uh, Cesar Quaylar. Quaylar had, had uh, injured his uh, ACL apparently out for the season. And right now, damani has got uh, six goals, three assists, and you can expect a lot from him. Um, he's been playing a lot with David Castellanos, and he should be doing a pretty good job for them. Now on the Syracuse side, Kirk Johnson off to a fantastic start in 2001. Yes, he has. He's been playing exceptionally well. you got to look at this guy. He's become the first freshman to lead the Orange men in scoring since Jeff, Jeff Canille in 1985. Johnson ranked number one in the Big East Conference in scoring so far this season. Ralph is ranked number six, and we are getting set for tonight's battle to get underway at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. Syracuse and Connecticut get it going after this on Super Sports. Over a century ago, Syracuse University students flocked to tiny Holden Observatory to marvel at the heavens. Today, that same sense of wonder and excitement is alive and well in classrooms across campus. Students and faculty are engaged in research in the sciences and humanities that is advanced even by today's standards. And our alumni, let's just say they're finding new ways to touch the stars. Syracuse University, believers in the art of becoming. A lot of people talk about building the economy and the Time Warner Cable, we're doing something about it. We're investing in Central New York by building a state-of-the-art digital distribution network, by hiring and training the best employees and by getting involved in community projects like Vision 2010. Time Warner Cable encourages you to join with us and invest in our community's future by supporting the local economy whenever you can. Together, we've got the power. Welcome back to the soccer stadium on the Syracuse University campus as we get set for tonight's matchup between Syracuse and Connecticut. Both teams nationally ranked. It should be a great Big East Conference battle. UConn starters, the forwards, Ralph and Pecorelli. At midfield, Curtis McLeod, Castellanos, and Jai. On defense, Forco, Bondi, Soares, and Thomas. And the goalkeeper for Connecticut Tad, Brahim Hancock, off to a great start this season. Yeah, he's made a lot of great saves. 31 saves, and he's got just about 70% average on saves. Fantastic play. This week, he was the uh, Big East uh, goalkeeper of the week. Syracuse starters, the forwards, Johnson, Torok, and Park. The midfielders, Ingles, Cristofori, and Andrade. And also on midfield, Hall. On defense, Chapman, Schneider, and Cross. And the goalkeeper for the Orange men, number one, Anthony Peters. Yeah, Anthony Peters made a, a lot of saves. He's, um, again, he was the biggest player of the week. Uh, with just about an 80% average of saves. Head coach for the UConn Huskies. Ray Reed led the Huskies to the national championship last season. His fifth campaign in stores Connecticut, 74-21 and six at UConn. And the head coach for the Orange men at his alma mater, Dean Fody, now in his 11th season, 92-93 and 13 with the Orange men. He would love to get back to that 500 mark tonight. 
27th meeting all time between these two schools. Connecticut leads the series 14-9-3 against the Orange Men over the years. As we talked about earlier, Tad, it's a great rivalry, Syracuse and Connecticut. These teams have met in postseason play in recent years, and they know each other very, very well. Yeah, in last year in the, in the regular season, uh, UConn lost at home in a 1-0 one to, one to game. Now, that must have been quite troubling for them. And they want to make uh, their redemption today. The officials, the referee, Ken Tanner, he's joined down on the turf by John Barbudo and Clyde Best. And we are underway here at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. The orange men in orange, trimmed in white. And the UConn Huskies in the navy blue, trimmed in red and white. 45-minute halves on tap here at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill this evening. And walking through the crowd on our way up to our broadcast location, a big crowd is on hand to see the Orange Men take on the defending national champion, Yukon Huskies. Ari Schneider of the Orange Men, number five. Sophomore from East Brunswick, New Jersey. First minute of play, and neither team with a solid scoring chance just yet. Outstanding player for Connecticut, Damani Ralph, with a touch. Man, get up, get up! Two teams battling for possession on the far side. Yeah, Donnie Ralph is covering for uh, Caesar Huela right now. Caesar Huela had uh, an injury in ACL this season. He only played five games. He is gone for the rest of the season. Had to have surgery on that ruptured anterior cruciate ligament. Syracuse with a chance here. And the Orange men score. One minute and 51 seconds in, Syracuse takes a 1-0 lead over the defending national champion, UConn Huskies, the freshman Jared Park from Tully, New York, and Christian Brothers Academy gets the Orange men on the board. Yeah, the homeboy just, just out-hustled out -hustled the defense there. You can see him, he's just out-hustling, out-hustling over there against uh, Chris Bondi, takes a, takes a shot as the uh, goalie went down. Wide open. You can see he just got his foot right in there, got up right away after the defenseman went down. Wide open shot. It was beautiful. He was quick. It was good thinking. A smart play on his part. Outstanding play by Jared Park. Freshman out of Tully, New York. One of the top high school players in the country at Christian Brothers Academy. Four goals, 12 assists on the season. And on that play, we saw Connecticut's terrific defender, senior Chris Bondi, fall to the turf as Park beat him. And then the keeper, Raheem Hancock, was out of position. And it really looked to be a wide open look at the goal for Park. And he did not miss fire tag. No, not at all. And, and last week, uh, he played he played an extremely good game. He was the uh, freshman of the week. Uh, had four assists with, uh, with his game. <clears throat> and he will also play lacrosse for Syracuse head lacrosse coach John Desco in the spring, an outstanding athlete. Just getting his college career underway at Syracuse. one nothing Orange men. The goal a minute and 51 seconds in, scored by freshman Jarrett Park. And there is Jarrett. Big goal to give Syracuse early momentum in the one nothing lead. We'll get a throw in on the near side. And coming over to do the honors, Scott Cross, junior defender from Pittsburgh. Guido Cristofori sent to the head, broken up by Connecticut. Stepping in, Shabar Thomas. He's a freshman from Kingston, Jamaica. Backtracking for the Orange Men, Eric Chapman, number two. Tad, we take a look back at that goal a minute 51 in scored by Jared Park and that's such a big goal for the Orangemen to give them early momentum in this key matchup with the defending national champs the Yukon Huskies well, it gives them a great emotional lift because they, they know they can play against them now 
Jared Park is an unbelievable ball player. He's got great skills. And if you look at if you look at his high school record, 86 goals and 56 56 assists in his career. That's just unbelievable. You can see why 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 he did so why he did so well with uh, CBA. Scoring chance developing for Syracuse there, but Kirk Johnson sends it wide to the right. And he's here's running the goal. Running along Bondi. Bondi tries to move him outside. They both fall. Jerry's able to get up much quicker. The goalie comes at him. Again, wide open. Good thinking. Nobody was there to protect him. Excellent individual effort. Yes, it was an exceptional individual effort. All up for grabs on the far side of the field. Syracuse backtracking on defense, trying to clear it away. Connecticut without one of its top offensive players, Cesar Cuellar, suffered a torn ACL in a game against Villanova earlier this season. Sophomore, originally from Santa Cruz, Bolivia. He's gone for the rest of the campaign. Here's Park again, another scoring chance developing for the Orangemen. Whistle stops play. As Park was looking to find Kirk Johnson on the far side. Park sends ahead Darren Ingalls. Ingalls a junior, originally from Belgium. Got a big round of applause from the fans here during the pregame introductions. As did just about every orange man. Big crowd on hand for tonight's battle between Syracuse and Connecticut, two nationally ranked teams. And the Huskies, the defending national champions. They won it all in 2000. Well, Brahim's got to be troubled by that. Uh, and uh, I misspoke a little earlier. He uh, he has he didn't get the uh, uh, Big East goalkeeper of the week, but he d has uh, had a number of shutouts this, uh, this season. And last year he had 15 shutouts. But he's got to be really troubled with uh, having let that ball through. So we'll see how Connecticut rebounds. An early wake-up call for the Huskies as Park scored with less than two minutes gone by in the first half. Eric Chapman of the Orange Men. He's from Wallingford, Pennsylvania. We'll see that last play again. Nice job to come in and kick it away from Damani Ralph. Anthony Curtis will trigger for Connecticut. Syracuse setting up defensively. Yeah, this would be considered a direct kick because it was a trip. Curtis from Kingston, Jamaica. Snagged by Anthony Peters of the Orange, senior keeper from Schenectady, New York. Yeah, he placed himself well for that. Syracuse riding a three-game win streak, looking to win its fourth game in a row. Last time Syracuse won four straight, 1999. The Orangemen won six in a row in October of 99. Syracuse out shooting Connecticut so far, 2-0. Yeah, you know, it almost appears that they've set the pace on this game. They really have. They've come out very aggressively. And that first goal scored by Park really gave the Orangemen a lot of momentum. We'll try to build upon that as this game continues. Coming out, take the ball away, Anthony Peters. Very aggressive play by the Syracuse keeper. That was a good chance developing for Connecticut. That was a fantastic save. He brought himself out, closed the space between him and the, uh, the forward. Now he's watching the ball. He's bringing himself very, he closes that space between the, between the, the, the forward and himself not allowing the, the forward to get a shot at it. Two of the most dangerous players for Connecticut combining on that play is Lyndon Pecorelli tried to feed David Castellanos. And very aggressively and alertly, Peters came out, took the ball away. Connecticut has it in its own end. Near side it comes, Eric Soares. Now he sends ahead. Eric Chapman will take over in Syracuse's end. Looks like Castellanos is uh, trying to protect his nose. Might have had an injury uh, in the last week or so. This UConn team is banged up. 
They've lost two players to torn ACLs. Cesar Cuellar and Rui Fernandez. Senior Mansour Jai dislocated his right thumb during Connecticut's recent game against Pittsburgh. And he will play with a cast on his hand for the next four to six weeks. So the Huskies, defending national champions, are all banged up here in 2001. one nothing. Syracuse has the lead. Just about 10 minutes gone by in the first half here at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. Long goal in this game, scored a minute and 51 seconds in by Syracuse freshman Jarek Park. Bonnie Ralph trolling for the Huskies. Dangerous offensive threat. Lyndon Pecorelli had it and sent it away on the far side. Anthony Curtis takes it now. Away, away! Ball bounces beyond the end line. Tad, what do you make of this game? First 10 minutes in, what jumps out at you in this matchup between Syracuse and Connecticut? Well, in the first several minutes, uh, you can see that SU's uh, has managed to control the pace of the game. They're being aggressive, they're going for the ball, they're not. They're not sitting back, they're not, they're not on their heels. I think any time the defending national champion comes to your place, you can't help but get fired up. That time the ball bounced a little bit too far ahead of Jared Park as he was bearing down on the keeper for Connecticut, Raheem Hancock. Hancock came out to take it away. He's an outstanding talent, had 15 shutouts last season. Raheem Hancock, senior now from Middletown, Delaware. And there was a lot of hustle there on, on Jared's park. He uh, had an opportunity to get it in, but uh, wasn't able to reach the ball. Big rangy keeper, 6'3", 165 pounds. It's a good thing Syracuse beat him when they did with that goal, a minute 51 in. Although Syracuse's offense has been terrific in recent games, in the last three orange wins, Syracuse has scored four goals. First time since 1952 that Syracuse has scored at least four goals in three games in a row. So the Orange men have had the offense going in recent games, and they get that early quick goal tonight against Connecticut. Well, John Andrade said to the uh, said recently, just this week after playing uh, <clears throat> after playing against the Army, that he felt that his team was a dangerous team to match up with at this point. So he's got to be feeling pretty good about his his, uh, his play himself. Physical action on the far side of the field. And we get a whistle, stops play. Loose ball came to John Andrade, but he couldn't do anything with it. Andrade scored the game winning goal in that matchup between Syracuse and Connecticut last season, giving the Orange Men a 1 0 win over the then ranked number one UConn Huskies. Connecticut didn't fail in its quest to win the national championship, though. Though they lost that game, ranked number one at the time, falling to Syracuse. They did go on to win the national title. Here it comes near side. Darren Ingalls. Connecticut will take over. David Castellanos triggers. Castellanos wearing face guard, protecting his nose. Yet another one of those walking wounded for Connecticut. SU's playing a smart game right now. Not rushing, not rushing their passes, using their support if they have to. Still hustling to the ball. Senior keeper Anthony Peters walks it up for the Orange men. Connecticut takes over. Eric Soar is circling back in his own end. He drops it off for Chris Bondi. Bondi ahead for Damani Ralph. The key player for Connecticut we talked about before the game. Ranked sixth in the Big East Conference in scoring. Tries to dance with the ball and shakes Syracuse defenders, but he can't do it. Good job done by the Orange men to break that up. Back in UConn's end. And now it's dumped back to the keeper, Raheem Hancock. Anthony Peters just, just done a fabulous, fabulous job this year as goalkeeper. 
he must have been troubled by the first game against BC where they lost uh, five to one. But he's he's picked it up. He's managed to come back, especially in the last three games where, where they've just done an outstanding job. As um, as a high school, as a high school in high school, he was his goalkeeper of the year. He's a three-time league goalkeeper of the year. And he's a team MVP as a senior, leading his uh, team to a 19-1 mark, including ton, 12 shutouts. Both teams have bounced back from rocky starts to the season. You talk about that 5-1 loss to BC for Syracuse, Connecticut started the season 0-1-1. So a tough start to the campaign for the defending national champs, but they have rallied since then. Well, they were designated to be the biggest champions this year in the, in the preseason polls. Uh, and, and several of the players were on the, uh, were picked for the uh, preseason all-star team, the Big East preseason all-star team. Whistle stops to play in midfield. There's a look at UConn's Mansoor Jai. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Now talking about Jai, he dislocated his right thumb in a game between Connecticut and Pittsburgh earlier this season, and he'll have that thumb in a cast for the next month and a half or so. A little bit more than 15 minutes gone by in this one. Syracuse has a 1-0 lead on the UConn Huskies. Jarrett Park, Syracuse's outstanding freshman with the goal, a minute 51 into this first half of play. We talked about Syracuse's three-game win streak a couple of minutes ago. It began with a road win at Villanova, 4-1, to and a 4-1 to home win over Pittsburgh, and a 4-2 victory here over Army. That's a lot of goals. Three games in a row, Tad. It is a lot of goals. And, you know, I've heard talk to, talk to people, I've talked to people who don't normally watch uh, soccer, and they think, well, soccer's a kind of boring sport. You have, you know, one one goal, two goals, three goals, maybe four goals in a game. Well, I, I say, compare that to, compare that to uh, football. Think of it as seven points, and so it'd be more like a uh, 28 to seven game if you were if you were, if you happen to be watching football. So four goals in a game is quite a bit, especially with the caliber of these two teams. Syracuse has the early one nothing lead in this one. Matt Torok of the Orange Men, number nine, senior. Native of Pennsylvania. Eric Soares throws in for Connecticut. Beautiful night. Temperature in the upper 60s. Very comfortable breeze is blowing. Perfect mid-October weather for Syracuse, New York. It's almost balmy. Great to be outside for this one. Connecticut really hasn't mounted a solid offensive threat in this game yet. The Orange men have done a terrific job defensively closing down those passing lanes. We saw Ryan Hall of the Orange make a nice play a moment ago, number 11, junior from Great Falls, Virginia. See, that was a smart play. Move to the outside, back again. Move it back, set themselves up again, get themselves in position. This game is really just based on positioning and passing. It's a simple game. Simple to say, but difficult to execute. Right. And those players that put themselves in position more aggressively, with uh, greater deliberation, and play a smarter game are the ones that are going to win. Ball comes to Chris Bondi, senior defender for Connecticut. Circling back to pick it up for Syracuse, Eric Chapman. The Orange men really haven't had a solid scoring chance since that goal scored by Jared Park a minute and 51 seconds into the first half. It's been a defensive struggle since then. A lot of this game has been played right around the midfield area. I have to say that uh, Chris Bondi's got to be slapping himself right now for, um, for that defensive move that uh, he failed on. May have slipped on the turf. 
But you're right, he was out of position in a big way and really left his goalkeeper, Brahim Hancock, out to dry. Yeah, and there's really no way that a, a goalkeeper can, can win it on a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that's, that's the reasoning for the uh, offsides rule. Once again, the ball at midfield. Damani Ralph slips on the turf. And now Syracuse has it. Johnson sends it to Park. And it rolls to the keeper, Brahim Hancock. Syracuse out shooting Connecticut in this game so far. The keeper for the Orangemen, Anthony Peters, really yet to be tested. He's made a couple good stops so far, timing himself for uh, for the ball. Did a good job to come out of his own net very aggressively and take the ball away from that two-man rush that was on for Connecticut. Lyndon Pecorelli and David Castellano sparing down on him. And Peters very aggressively came out and took the ball away. Darren Ingles takes over for the Orange Men, deep in Syracuse's end. Ball deflected out of bounds off Matt Torok. There's Chris Bondi, defender we talked about. Senior from Houston, Texas. And yeah, he's Connecticut's go captain. He's been a two time All American. He's made 69 starts and 69 games as a Husky. It's probably, probably a little more than that right now. Connecticut, a very talented team. They have had some injury problems of late here in 2001, but a lot of the players that helped head coach Ray Reed win the national championship last season. There's a look at the UConn head man standing in front of his bench. He led the Huskies to the national title in 2000. A lot of those players that earned championship rings last year are back in 2001 for the Huskies. They've had great success in the Big East Conference in recent years, certainly on the basketball side, as both the men and women have won national championships in recent years for head coaches Jim Calhoun and Gino Ariema, respectively. And they added a men's soccer national title in 2000. Chris Bondi's done some, some great stuff as a defender. He's, um, last year he won the 2000 Herman Trophy Award winner. He was named for a soccer, soccer American Collegiate MVP. He was the most outstanding defensive player. He's got a lot of hustle. He plays smart. But unfortunately, in this uh, first goal that SG was able to produce with uh, uh, Jar Jared Parks, he made a mistake. And that's certainly something Jared Park can be proud of, to beat a defender like that one-on-one. -on -one. Chris Bondi, one of the best in the country. Absolutely. Now, the pace of the game is kind of slowed down right now. Probably to get wind. Maybe just kind of resettle themselves. But they started out real strong, moving very quickly. Solid passing by the Huskies, moving the ball up the field. Sent to the far side for Lyndon Pecorelli. Good feed in front, coming out, Anthony Peters. He comes out to play it. And again, that aggressive play has really helped Peters out here in the first half. Syracuse in transition. Cristofori has it. Connecticut trying to set up defensively. That was, that was a phenomenal save on his part to come out that far and have the, uh, the wherewithal to be able to knock it out with his hands. That was risky. Ball headed away out of danger by Eric Soares, number 13. Midi for UConn. Matt Torok was there, but Soares stepped in front of him. And he headed the ball away. Here's a look at Soares, senior from West Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, that was a that was a, that was a pretty tough move on uh, Peter's part. It was risky, but it's pretty pretty gutsy. And that's really kind of how this team is uh, coming along. They 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 got they got a lot of guts, especially after their losses against BC. They managed to come together and win the last the last six of their eight games. Good chance for the Orange men in front. Torok tried to finish off the play, but just sent it wide. We'll see it again. Good setup in front for the Oranges, number nine. It's a great header. 
Torak's been playing a good game, and he uh, he scored two goals in the game against the Army uh, on uh, on Tuesday. A lot of time left to go in this first half. Connecticut trying to get it going offensively. Chris Bondi controls. And now he feeds David Castellanos. Now for Damani Ralph. Back for Castellanos. Ball kicked off Johnson of Syracuse, slowing down the play a bit. That was a good thing. Gave the Syracuse defense some time to get settled. And now it is orange ball. Yeah, Torex, the, uh, he's a senior from uh, Wyoming, Pennsylvania. He was registered in 2000 due to an injury, but he, and where he started five of the 13 games. He is, uh, must be a studious young man because he's, he's the biggest uh, academic all-star. Syracuse has it in its own end. Up ahead for John Andre. He sends into that far corner. Wait. Connecticut breaks it up, though. Kicking it away, David Castellanos. Back comes for Eric Chapman. Johnson sends to the far side for Schneider. Pass intended for Ingles, broken up by Connecticut, and Castellanos. Castellanos, very fleet-footed player. It seems like he's always around the ball. Number 20 for Connecticut, David Castellanos. Yeah, that was great hustle on Castellanos to come in and, and interrupt that pass. Ari Schneider on the far side. We'll drop it off for Eric Chapman. John Andre. Now Syracuse drops it back after Andre fed ahead to Johnson. Andre with another touch on the far side. Physical play in the part of UConn's defense. And now the Huskies boot it beyond that sideline on the far side. Shavar Thomas with the play, a freshman from Kingston, Jamaica. Only freshman in the starting lineup for UConn. Guido Cristofori of the Orange Men will send in. Cristofori is a local boy. He's actually from Fairport, New York, not too far from here. He was actually a transfer from West Virginia last year, and he's really proven himself for the uh, Syracuse University team. He's got two goals, one assist uh, against Adelphi. And he's uh, another studious young man. He's uh, made the biggest all academic all-stars. He's a major. He's Child and Family Services. Syracuse scored the game's only goal a minute and 51 seconds into the first half. Freshman Jarrett Park was able to get UConn defender Chris Bondi out of position, and then he was able to beat the keeper, Brahim Hancock, one-on-one. -on -one. Jose Sura checks in for Connecticut. Freshman getting some playing time from Brentwood, New York. Down on Long Island. Yes, sir. Has uh, sco scored uh, one goal and one and obtained one assist this game. A tough defense played by Syracuse. Sura looks to be a very quick player, but the play is broken up by Jared Park of the Orange Men. Connecticut hasn't had a shot on goal yet. Syracuse with three shots and a goal. And the real reason for that, as we have less than 17 minutes to go in the first half, is the aggressive play of the keeper, Anthony Peters. Tad, a couple of times, Connecticut had some offensive chances developing. Peters came way out of the net to break up those opportunities. Made some smart plays. He was, he was able to time, time his run, get between the, the ball, get the ball and, ball and defender very quickly. Senior keeper of the Orange Men, Anthony Peters, out of Schenectady. Very aggressive play on his part between the pipes so far tonight. 
and it has stymied UConn's offense. Yeah, he's the biggest goalkeeper of the week last week. Maybe a chance for Connecticut here. Surat takes the pass on the near side, and whistle stops play. Sam Forco trying to feed Sura, and the play's blown dead. So Syracuse will take over. Yeah, Sura has, uh, he's had this season, he's been able to catch uh, one assist, one goal. So he comes in as a good replacement. Very quick player. He isn't the biggest guy. No, he's fast on the feet. 5-4, but he can fly. And that's what makes this, this game a, a, a great equalizer. You don't have to be a big guy to play to play soccer. You can, you can be six foot three, you can be five foot six, you can be five three. It doesn't matter. That's not that's what determines uh, whether you're going to be a great player or not. Unlike uh, some of the other sports such as basketball or football. Ryan Hall took a shot on that far side. The junior from Great Falls, Virginia, that smacked the right shin. Take a look at what happens on that far side. Watch Syracuse's number 11. That was a trip yeah. on his part. That would uh, result in a direct kick. Well, that's, that's right why they play with the shin. That's why they wear shin guards. Now, you can score off a direct kick. Now, no one has to touch the ball after the uh, ball is kicked. We'll have a bruise there. Feet in front, just a little bit too far. Christopher trying to keep it in. He sends it out, and the kick is high from the Orange's Darren Ingles. Pretty good chance for the Orangeman developing there, but Ingles sent it too high over the cage. There we go. Some um, some great passing, which uh, almost led to another another score. And he uh, he shot it high, and, and usually that happens when a uh, when a player lifts their head just as they're about to kick the ball, take that shot. And unfortunately, it's, it's kind of like the game of golf. If you lift your head up as you're going to uh, hit that ball, you're going to lose control of that. So he needs to keep his head down. Huskies trying to get some offense going before we hit halftime. That's Lyndon Pecorelli, sophomore from California. La Crescenta in the Golden State. Syracuse's defense has been tough, led by the aggressive play of goalkeeper Anthony Peters. All it takes is one, though. UConn scores the game's next goal. They'll tie it up, so they've got to stiffen on defense as well. A two-goal lead in this game, Tad, either way, might be insurmountable. Absolutely. The way the defense is playing, be pretty difficult for either team to try to catch up if, uh, if there was a two-goal lead. Anthony Curtis with it. Met by Syracuse defenders. Guido Cristofori marked him. Mansoor Jai has it on the far side. Again, it's taken away by Syracuse. I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. They're playing a, they're playing a smart game. They're not rushing it. Simple passes back and forth like they're doing right now. No reason to rush it. Oh, that one might have been a bit rushed. Getting that first goal really, I think, loosened Syracuse up a bit. Getting that one nothing lead early in the first half gave the Orange men a ton of confidence right away. Sure, especially for that freshman. He's got to be feeling pretty good about that. And they've beaten these guys before. Syracuse knocked off the then ranked number one UConn Huskies last season. John Andrade scored the game's only goal in a one nothing orange win. So the orange men know they can play with the national champs. They beat them last year. David Castellanos has it on the far side wearing that face guard to protect his nose. Quick player and Peters comes up with the save. Good defense played by Hall who is with Castellanos step for step. Peters makes the save, and the Orange men will take over. 11.40 left to play in the half. Nearsighted comes for Darren Ingles. Scott Cross sends it back to the near side. 
Ingles has it broken up by Jose Sura. Quick feet. And Sura's He is quick. Fast player. Keep an eye on him. 5 4 freshman from Brentwood, New York. Whistle stops play on the near side. We had a collision between Eric Soares of Connecticut and Kirk Johnson of the Orange Men. Johnson a little bit slow in getting up, but now he's back on his feet. He's been held in check here in this first half. Big East Conference's leading goal scorer and leading point man in the league heading into tonight. I'm gonna have to, been, I'm gonna have to guess they've been keying in on him. Sure. Seeing that he's, um, he's such a formidable player and he's quick. And this is where this is where uh, Keith uh, or, or Jared uh, Jared Parks needs to needs to step in, take over, and he has already. Johnson has 10 goals, four assists, good for 24 points on the season. Tops in the league in goals and points scored, and his 10 goals have come on 21 shots on goals, so he is accurate. He's accurate, a great percentage. Doesn't Highest waste percentage on the team, 48 percent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't waste doesn't waste shots. Good, Chris. Stepping in to break it up for the Orange men, Darren Ingles. UConn back with it, though. Bondi feeding Sura. And he drops it off for Bondi. Sura slips. Syracuse defense hustling back to break it up, but Connecticut will keep in. Lyndon Pecorelli dancing with it. There's some great footwork on Pecorelli's part there. Sends it deep on that far side, and Connecticut will have to reset. Less than 10 minutes to go in the first half. Castellanos and Pecorelli on the far side for Connecticut. Anthony Curtis takes it. Now it's interesting, Bondi, he's, he's playing, uh, he's a defender, but he's playing midfield right now. So I think he's probably looking for a little bit of redemption. Maybe hoping to get a score. Certainly he feels terrible about that sure. slip he made in the first two minutes of this game. He was hooked up with Jared Park one-on-one, -on -one, trying to defend him. Looked like he slipped to the turf and couldn't get back up on his feet. And Park was able to do so for the Orangemen, and he beat the Connecticut goalie, Brahim Hancock, a minute and 51 seconds in, and that's the only goal of the game so far. There's a look at Kirk Johnson, Big East Conference leading scorer. Now Johnson did, a, did a, a smart thing right there. He thought he might have a shot at that ball, realized that he wasn't going to be able to get, it, get around the defend, defender, or the uh, forward rather, and he allowed the ball to go out of bounds, giving them a goal kick. Johnson leads the Orange men in the Big East Conference with 10 goals and 24 points on the season. Matt Torok goes down for the Orange men, colliding with Mansoor Jai. So you see that. Right thumb heavily wrapped. Put his shoulder right into him there. Knocked him right open. I don't know what he's uh, complaining about or questioning. That was pretty blatant. And that's smart for the ref to do. He wants to keep the game in control, so he's going to have you know, occasion, the occasional ref will need to talk to a player and just say, hey, you need to settle down over here. Heading down towards seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. A one nothing orange lead. Syracuse trying to make it stand up before the break. UConn ball. Jai sends ahead for Lyndon Pecorelli. Two Syracuse defenders head into that corner. Track it down. Chapman and Hall. And Chapman was able to kick it away. Head coach Dean Fody. Syracuse grad in 1983 picked up his masters at SU Looks like we in had 1985. Yellow. Looks like we had a yellow card right there. We could take a look at that. We got one on the ball, Kirk. This well, has been a very physical game so far. The ref was able to uh, just issue the yellow card, so and I'm gonna right. guess that it might have been on uh, Kirk Johnson. Couldn't quite make it out from here, though. So he's uh, he's only allowed another yellow card. 
if for some reason uh, if he gets another yellow card, he will be out of the game. Play broken up in midfield by Connecticut's Eric Soares. And for the Orange men, Matt Torok went down as Soares crashed into him from behind. It was inadvertent contact, though. Six and a half minutes left to play in the first half. One nothing Syracuse. UConn, the defending national champions. They knocked off the Orange men in the Big East tournament. Syracuse defeated Connecticut. One nothing earlier in the season. Huskies ranked number one in the nation at the time. Here's that quick player for Connecticut we talked about earlier, Jose Sura, trying to make things happen on offense. Connecticut looking for the equalizer before halftime. Be an interesting statistic to, to obtain is how many headers are are uh, used in a game. Because at least in my observation, those those teams that, that are able to produce more headers are more likely to gain control of the ball. We'll keep an eye on that as this game continues. Syracuse player down. There's a look at Shavar Thomas of the Huskies, and we'll take a look at that play again. Kirk Johnson. Kirk Johnson. Looks like a little tugging with uh, with the shirt. Bring him down. He caught him in the back of the head with his foot. Any kind of pulling with the shirts is, uh, is, is, a, is a penalty. And so it will be a direct, uh, will be a, well, rather receive a direct kick for that. Now, if that had happened in the penalty box, that would be a, uh, that would be a penalty shot. Johnson a little bit slow in collecting himself. Fired wide to the far side. A little trickery on their part, try to get a goal. Now occasionally that might work, but I think with a team against a team like UConn, you're not gonna have any success with a shot like that. Come on, right! Come on, right! Shake! Looks like uh, Johnson was able to shake that off. Syracuse out shooting Connecticut five to one here in this first half. And the Orange men have the game's only goal. Sure, and it's been a clear domination on, on uh, Syracuse's part right from the very beginning. Connecticut really hasn't impressed me so far. They have been beaten up with injuries this season. Let's see what kind of halftime speech their head coach, Ray Reed, could come up with, and we'll see if we see more inspired play from Connecticut in the second half. It almost appears they're playing just slightly out of control, maybe just a bit too emotional. I think they were really surprised when Syracuse scored that goal in the first two minutes of the first half. I think it was a reaction like, uh-oh, we didn't expect this. Now we're down by a goal so early in the game. Sometimes that knocks you off your game. You don't have that comfort zone early in the first half where you can feel out the other team and kind of yeah. get your legs under you. It makes good sense, Ted. They, uh, any team you play, especially especially at this level, you have to feel them out, get a sense of what they're like. But uh, Syracuse University didn't give them the opportunity. Went right after them. Huskies trying to tie the game before we hit halftime, moving down toward four minutes to play in the first half. Kept in by Connecticut and Chris Bondi. Now it comes to the near side for Jose Sura. He drops it back for Eric Soares. Up ahead for Damani Ralph, one of the top scorers in the Big East Conference. Can he get something done? No, he is closed down by three Syracuse defenders. Christofori was there, along with Jeff Lewis, number 13, who was checked in for the Orange Man. I'm watching Damani Ralph. This, he's got great foot skills. He moves very quickly. He's very fast, very aggressive. There is Damani Ralph. We talked about him before yes. the game. He's had uh, six goals, three assists this season so far. Really uh, rose to the occasion when he took over for uh, for uh, Quayla, who had that injury on the uh, on his knee. Junior college transfer from Meridian Community College down in Mississippi. Less than three minutes to play in the first half. 
And Syracuse maintains a 1-0 lead. See that last play again. Deep in Syracuse's end. It was a great kick, and it was almost a um, great header there. And I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. I think there ought to be some, uh, some statistics as to how many headers are used during a game, because as you watch it, you realize that the headers can actually determine the, um, the pace of the game as well as the control of the game. Just a simple pass with the header right there. Headed back to the Syracuse keeper, Anthony Peters. Now, under normal circumstances, you can't pass it back to your goalie, your keeper. Uh, unless uh, unless you use your head, or it's uh, an inadvertent, uh, or it's an inadvertent touch with your with your with your back or uh, or the side of your leg, but you can't actually try to pass with anything other than uh, with your foot. That would be uh, that would be considered a uh, a penalty or a foul rather. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Connecticut trying to jumpstart the offense before the break. They've not been able to do that in the first half to this point. A little pushing and shoving by uh, Guido Christopher's part. Boy from Fairport. So Connecticut will take over. Now in an uh, indirect kick, they're, they're allowed to uh, line up at a wall. Stepping in to kick it away for the Orange men. Jared Park. He scored the game's only goal. One minute, 51 seconds into the first half. Good job by Chapman to close down the passing lane. Excellent job of defense there. The part of this is watching UConn. They're trying to force this ball a little too much. And uh, certainly, certainly a Syracuse University can expect that. Syracuse advancing the ball in the final minute of the first half. Park goes down, feeding the near side of the field, and Jeff Lewis, he sends it on goal, but it's taken by Hancock. That was a great, that was a great, uh, well, it could have been a pass, but it was a great shot on goal. Less than 30 seconds to play in the first half. That header really didn't get ball out of harm's way. No, not that time. Ten, nine, Final 10 eight, seconds of the half, and seven, Peters makes a sliding four, stop just five, to play it safe. Four, three, two, and time will wind down here in this two, first half. Very solid effort put forth by the Syracuse Orange men in the first half. The only goal scored by Jarrett Park, number 15 for the Orange men, with a minute and 51 seconds gone by in the first half of play. Looks like some of Jarrett's family is on hand here at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. Orange have a one nothing lead over the defending national champs at the break. We'll have our halftime show for you right after this here on Super Sports. When a crisis strikes, children need a voice. Help all our children heal. More than ever, kids across the country need to feel that there's something they can do. The Kids Helping Kids campaign lets them reach out to the children most impacted by the September 11th disaster. Thousands of kids are writing letters and drawing pictures for the children whose families and neighborhoods were destroyed. It's a small thing that is doing all of our children a world of good. To join the Kids Helping Kids campaign, call 1-800-FOR-KIDS. This is William Shatner. Imagine the training and skill it takes for a dog to serve as a blind person's eyes. Guide dogs give blind people the freedom to go wherever they want. And the law permits them everywhere that's open to the public. A blind person and a guide dog are a working team for personal independence. To learn more, call the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind toll-free 1-800-548-4337. That's 1-800-548-4337. Welcome back to the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. We are at halftime. Big crowd on hand for this meeting between Syracuse and the defending national champion, UConn Huskies. The Orange men have the lead at the break. one nothing over UConn. We'll take a look now at the first half highlights, and we'll see the game's only goal a couple of times. Two different looks at it. We'll see the play develop as Syracuse moves the ball up the field, Tad, for number 15 freshman Jarrett Park, who completes the play beautifully. This is just out-hustled by Jarrett Parks. He gets up after being taken down by, by Bondi, 
bam, hits the back of the net. And on this play, he beats two of the top defenders in the country. Number four for Connecticut, defender Chris Bondi, and the keeper for the Huskies, Raheem Hancock, who had 15 shutouts last season. Great play by Jared Park, the freshman out of Christian Brothers Academy and Tully, New York. And speaking of great goalkeeper play, how about Anthony Peters tonight, Tad? Very aggressive in net for the Orange men. Absolutely. Close the distance between uh, himself and the defender getting that ball. First half stat, Syracuse out shooting Connecticut 6-2. Each keeper with a save, and the Huskies have had one corner kick. Syracuse has attempted none so far tonight. We'll take a look now at the Big East Conference standings, how these teams stack up heading into tonight's play. And you notice the numbers in parentheses. Tad, as you said a moment ago, before we came back on here at the soccer stadium, six of the top 25 teams in the country are in the Big East Conference. Second half of the standings in the league. What's really amazing about this is that uh, three of the three of the best uh, three of the best players. We are getting set for the second half to get underway. In goal for the Orange Men, Anthony Peters trying to protect a one nothing lead. We'll come back with the second half right after this on Super Sports. How does your garden grow? I'm Carrie Lynn Arthur, host of a brand new show on Time Warner 13 called My Cozy Home. Each week will help inspire you with great craft and decorating ideas that you can do in your home. Using affordable items and simple techniques, you'll be amazed at how easy it is to create that cozy look that makes your house a home. Tune into a new episode of My Cozy Home every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. only on Time Warner 13. Whether it's your responsibilities as a parent, your rights as a defendant, or the best plan for your estate, Attorneys on Call is here to answer your questions each month. We present a panel of experts for live discussions of legal issues involving the hot topics of the day. Phone in with your legal questions on the third Monday of each month from 7 to 8 p.m. here on Time Warner 13. Hello, I'm Rochelle Casella, your host for the call-in program, Standpoint. Each month, our panel presents its standpoint on major projects, issues, and initiatives that impact the quality of life here in Central New York. Join us the fourth Monday of each month from 7 to 8 p.m. here on Time Warner 13. can we in Onondaga County do to enrich the way that we relate to each other? Well, on Straight to the Source, we explore the current situation of human rights and human relations in our communities. From national concerns to issues particular to our local community, they are topics that impact the quality of your life here in Central New York. You're invited to call us on Straight to the Source. In the month of October, Time Warner 13 will present a program about the drug ecstasy. It is meant to inform parents, teens, and young adults about the dangers of the ecstasy drug. Please watch at one of these scheduled times. For generations, Syracuse University has offered those seeking a higher education 
the opportunity to share in a rich variety of educational and professional experiences. This timeless vision of learning, commitment, and success has been shared by Syracuse students past and present. Emphasis on the core values of quality, caring, diversity, innovation, and service makes Syracuse a leading student-centered research university. I'm running late. I know. Bye. Wait for my signal to cross, okay? Welcome back to the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. Just seconds into the second half of play. You haven't missed a thing. The Orangemen lead 1-0 over Connecticut. That goal for the Orangemen coming 1 minute 51 seconds into the first half. Scored by freshman Jared Park. And the Syracuse defense outstanding in the first half. And great to start the second half as well. Outstanding play by Ryan Hall as he slid in to knock the ball away from the oncoming UConn Husky David Castellanos had a good look at it. That was a real good save by Ryan Hall. He's a, he actually normally plays a midfielder and a forward. But he was able to come back, get his foot in there, and do a slide tap, and knock the ball out. A minute into the second half, Syracuse maintaining a 1 0 lead over the Huskies, and we'll see how aggressive Connecticut comes out in the second half of play tag. They really didn't look all that impressive in the first half. Maybe a little bus lag after their trip from Stores, Connecticut. Well, they seem to be coming back in the second half right there, just, just as indicated by the way they came down, came down the field there. Yeah, that was a good start to the proceedings in the second half. We'll see if they can keep it up. Away! Connecticut has the ball on the offensive end. The orange defense surrounding senior goalkeeper Anthony Peters has been strong all evening long. And a moment ago, we saw that terrific sliding stop made by Ryan Hall, number 11 of the orange men as he shut down oncoming David Castellanos in a hurry. So Peters will kick it away here. Ryan, Ryan's a, uh, a junior from Great Falls, Virginia. He started 17 of the last, last of 19 games in 2000. He's a good addition to this, to this, uh, to this team. Huskies control in their own end. Sam Forco with it for Connecticut. Tried to find Damani Ralph. Move it beyond his reach. Huskies have it in midfield. Anthony Curtis drops it back. Mansoor Jai with a touch now. That right thumb heavily wrapped in a cast. Suffered a dislocated thumb in the game between Connecticut and Pittsburgh recently, and it will remain in that cast for the next month and a half or so. Guido Cristofori of the Orange Men with a touch. Now it's taken away by Connecticut and Lyndon Pecorelli, number 11. Up ahead for David Castellanos on the near side. Centering feet in front, snared in midair by Anthony Peters. Kind of a risky pass there on the far side, but the Orange Men are able to get it away from the Huskies. Jarrett Park booting it away. And it does appear that Connecticut is coming out more aggressive here in this second half. They're playing smarter. They're, they're passing a little more, and, and, and then they're not trying to force the ball forward. If they need to, they're passing it back, starting it over. Head coach of the Huskies, Ray Reed, graduate of Southern Connecticut, class of 1982, led the Huskies to the national championship in the year 2000. At a quick glance, you might think that was Billy Joel. We have to get another shot of him a little bit later on. You, the viewer, can judge for yourself, but. In our eyes, he's a dead ringer for the piano man. All right, you be the judge. Ray, turn around. Uh, Billy Joel today. Kind of the grizzled Billy Joel of 2001. Sing us the song, Piano Man. Mark Ballard tells us he's in a New York state of mind, to be sure. That is the case tonight. At visiting, or at Syracuse, the visiting UConn Huskies are down 1-0. 
with less than five minutes gone by here in the second half. We can see the Huskies coming out here in the second half much more aggressive on offense, much quicker to the ball. Good play by Anthony Peters to deflect that shot. He knocked it away to the far side. But the Huskies will keep the pressure on here. Some great footwork right here. Wide open by himself. And a smart move, just a simple touch of the hand by Peters to knock it out. Of course, giving a corner kick to UConn. Just able to get a hand on it and knock it away. Away! Ball deflected high over the goal. A little frustration on the part of the Huskies and Damani Ralph. Connecticut unbeaten in Big East Conference play, 4-0. and oh. Coming into this matchup with the Orange Men, and so far tonight, Tad, Syracuse has given the Huskies all they can handle. Well, especially with the shots on goal. Actually, was giving them five shots on goal, five shots on goal, and they've managed to score one of those goals, one of those occasions. Substitution for Syracuse, checking in number 16, Derek McGeehan. He's a freshman from Granville, Pennsylvania, replacing Matt Torok, the senior. So Torok gets a breather here in the second half, and McGeehan sees his first action of the night for the Orange Men. Now Torok will be able to return into the game if, he, if, if they feel they need to do that. In the, in the first half, if he, had, if he had subbed out, he wouldn't be allowed to return. But in the second half, he is allowed to return. Chris Bondi chasing it down for the Huskies. Connecticut has stepped up the pressure offensively in the second half, but the Orange defense has been equal to the task all night long. Good support for keeper Anthony Peters all evening. Huskies desperately trying to tie this game. Forco with a header for Connecticut, trying to send it ahead for a teammate. And coming up with it, David Castellanos. Ansor Jai will try to keep in. He drops it back to midfield for Bondi. Here comes Chris Bondi. Guido Cristofori shadowing him. Bondi gets a return pass. Coming out of the net to make the stop for Syracuse, Anthony Peters, who've got a whistle against the Orange men as the Husky player went down to the turf. He was tripped. Well, this may very well lead to a penalty kick because it looked like it was a uh, trip from behind. Looked to be inadvertent with the naked eye. Bonnie's moving the ball. Shoulder to shoulder. Looked like it had gone, yeah. gone either way. Looked like Chapman was going for the ball, in my opinion. He was visibly upset when the whistle blew. Bondi a little bit shaken up on that play, but now he's back on his feet, assisted by teammate Shavar Thomas. And sure, I think it goes back to Bondi wanting to redeem himself, forcing himself in there. And being a defender, he's normally not playing that, that far up. You made that point back in the first half, and you're right on the money there. Dad, as he took it all the way up the field himself, he wanted to get that game-tying goal because it was his mistake, it was his slip back in the first half, in the first two minutes, that freed Jared Park to go one-on-one -on -one with keeper Brahim Hancock, and he beat him one minute, 51 seconds in for the game's lone goal to this point. And this is very difficult for any goalie. He only has to commit to, he has got to commit to one side, and that's it. And he watched, he committed himself to, to his right, and unfortunately, Bondi kicked to the, uh, kicked to his left. We're tied. 1-1 one, one tie, Chris Bondi with the goal for Connecticut. And Tad, you waxed prophetic back in the first half when you said he wanted so badly to get the game time goal, and he does right here on the penalty kick. We'll see it again as this goal makes it 1 1. If Peters goes, commits to the left, or to his right, and the ball goes to the left. There's really no way that a, uh, a goalie can, can win on a one on one situation. It's, it's generally going to go in the way of the forward of the attacker. Bondi looks to be. Limping, shaken up after that collision with Eric Chapman. 
And that sure. resulted in the penalty kick. Certainly not so shaken up that he wasn't able to dribble it down there and, and then uh, score on a penalty kick. So 1-1 one, one, with a lot of time left to go in the second half. So essentially, we started a new game right now. Now, Syracuse has done a great job in the second half this season, outscoring opponents 19 to 7. And I'd have to bet, base that on stamina. When you, can, when you can outscore your opponents 19 to 7, that means you've got a bit more stamina. You're still, you're still playing a smart game, passing the ball more, ball more often. Now, a Syracuse player is down. We'll take a look at that collision for you again. And the player that went down for Syracuse was freshman Jared Park, wrapped up with Mansoor Jai. There you see that heavy cast on Jai's right hand, covering that thumb injury. Peters comes well away from his goal to play this rolling ball. All even at one. With a lot of time left to go in the second half. Now throughout the season, through at least through this season, uh, SU is uh, outshot. It's uh, had more sh had, had uh, obtained more goals than any, any of the opponents. Shots on goal is pretty equal for all, for all, for their average. Castellanos. Drops it back for Sam Forco. He sends ahead now for Damani Ralph. Wrapped up with Derek McGean of the Orange Men. And we have a whistle. Lyndon Pegarelli came away with the ball that time. Boys, let's go! A little bit of holding there. That would lead in a direct kick to foul. Can't hang on to anybody like that. Especially you're not supposed to use your arms in soccer. Simple rule. It's one of the it's one of the laws of soccer. Except for the goal. And up, we're up, get up. That looked like that might have been an offsides on uh, Castellanos. David Castellanos with that face guard protecting his nose. I'd Years will kick it away here. I'd have to guess in all likelihood that uh, that face injury was uh, as a result of uh, heading, just like that. And when you watch that, it's hard not to think that someone's gonna collide, perhaps a nose to the back of the head. Sure. Or a nose to a nose. It is risky when two players go up for the ball. Two or more players go up for the ball at the same time. Good job by Syracuse to clear it away. The Orange men yet to mount an offensive threat here in the second half. Connecticut with momentum. Syracuse trying to change that here. Up ahead on the far side, Jared Park. Tripped up by a Connecticut defender. Tackle made on the far side by the Huskies. And we'll see that. Last play again, coming is, in to kick it away, Chris Bondi. That was great, great uh, hustle on uh, Jared Parks uh, uh, on his part. But the difficulty was that he might have looked like he was getting uh, a tripped up, but there was a slide tackle. It's, you're allowed to do that in soccer. You're allowed to try to knock the ball away. Connecticut with the edge and corner kicks in this game. Yeah. Ball kept in by. Ari Schneider, Christofori on the near side, and there's the whistle. Connecticut takes over in its own end. Syracuse fans don't agree with that call, as the whistle blew the play dead. It looks like that might have been an offsides on Christofori's part. Near side it comes for Sam Forco, senior from Houston, Texas.
Huskies drop it back. As you watch these players, you realize this game is simply a, a game of 30, 40, 50, maybe even in this situation, it might be a 30, 40 yard dash. It's placing yourself in a position to allow yourself to pass or take a shot on goal. That was a late trip right there. Cristofori went down. Mansour Jai tripping. Guido Cristofori. And I think we have another yellow card. And that will go against Mansour Jai. He's protesting the play. Well, it was a little after the ball had passed through his feet, so it would be uh, considered a penalty. And the yellow card, if uh, Jai gets another yellow card, he'll, he'll get ejected from the game. The yellow card's like a light, like a caution light. You get one, you get another one, you're out of the game. Eric Chapman triggering for the orange man. Goalkeeper came way out that time, Raheem Hancock. Another Connecticut player is slow to get up, and once again, that's Chris Bondi. He scored the game time goal earlier in the second half on a penalty kick, beating Syracuse goalkeeper Anthony Peters, and that tied the game 1-1. Still a lot of time left to go in the second half of play, more than 32 minutes. Uh, Bondi, very serious look on his face. I'm sure he's thinking, okay, I redeemed myself, but I still like to get this game won. Near wing for Ryan Hall. And it's broken up by Connecticut. Guido Cristofori will send in for the Orange Men as we make our way down to 32 minutes left to go in the second half. Here we go with the use of the headers, getting him out of the uh, pen penalty area. Good job by Schneider to keep it in off his chest. This call goes against Connecticut. Now we have some angry words being exchanged between the two teams. Not much of a foul there. It looked like he was pushing him from the back, but he had to replay. There was very little contact. Now you kind of gets a, is allowed to put up a wall to defend himself from this direct kick. No one needs to. No one needs to touch it on, on the direct character in order, to, in order to score. He's going to back him up because they normally have to go back at least uh, at least 30 yards. He's going to keep it, and the ref's going to keep asking him to back up. So the Husky set up the wall. Connecticut shuffling defensively as Damani Ralph takes his spot. Number 10 for Syracuse is John Andre. Number 7 is Guido Cristofori. They might try some trickery on this shot. Maybe a quick pass back and a shot off Cristofori. Andre with a shot high and too high over the crossbar. It's a good attempt. It's hard to get up, uh, get an accurate shot like that uh, over over the heads of everybody else, over their defenders. We'll take another look at that. Andrade's kick just a shade high. You can see it's about a foot over. I would have suggested that he try for the corner. He's because uh, the the goals are only eight feet. Certainly, it's uh, within the reach of any goalkeeper. But if he had shot for the corner, kept it up high in the corner, he would have had a better, sh uh, better likelihood of scoring. 30 minutes and change left to go in the second half. 1-1 one, one tie. Comes to midfield, and Shavar Thomas, he sends ahead for Sam Forka. Trying to lose John Andre, marking him. Scoots past him. Forko with a clear lane starting to develop. Syracuse defenders are there to close it down. Peters glad to get some help. Eric Chapman came in on that play. And now it's heading down back toward Connecticut's end. Very risky play there by the keeper for Connecticut, Raheem Hancock, but there weren't many Syracuse players trailing number eight, Kirk Johnson. 
You know, if he had been uh, another, if he had a trailer, he would have been able to uh, pass it off very quickly. You know, as we watch this, we can see that that UConn is playing much more aggressively now. They're playing a little smarter. than simple passes back, just like right now. And it allows it allows them to set their let's set their players up in a position that that is uh, much more conducive to, to passing or to scoring. These two teams, very familiar with each other, Syracuse and Connecticut, have played at least once every season, dating all the way back to 1982. Each team has shut out the other seven times. Obviously, that will not be the case tonight as we're tied 1-1 in the second half. These two teams have played in the Big East tournament a total of seven times every year from 83 through 86, then in 88, and also in 1999 and 2000. Connecticut has won five of those games. Last postseason meeting between Syracuse and UConn came last November 5th. Connecticut shutting out the Cuse 2-0 in that game. But keep in mind, last season, the Orange men defeated Connecticut 1-0. The Huskies ranked number one at the time. Game-winning goal scored by John Andre. And speaking of number one, that was another huge save right there, Tad, made by Anthony Peters, Syracuse's keeper. Yeah, this guy's an animal. He gets in there, does what he needs to do. Connecticut resets, dropping the ball all the way back for their keeper, Brahim Hancock. Again, simple passes. Taking their time, they're not rushing. So he gave to a player that was wide open. Shavar Thomas on the near wing. Now for David Castellanos. Finds a teammate, Lyndon Pecorelli, taken away by the Orange men. Battle for possession on the near side. And able to get it away for Syracuse, Ryan Hall. Andre had it in midfield. And Connecticut takes over. And Sir Jai with it. It almost appears that the, the the Orange men are somewhat back on their heels right now. And they need to step it up, play a little more aggressively. Just like that. And Ray breaks it up. And then uh, use passing and smart passing. No rushing it. Two, two, Whistle kills two. the play on the far side. And Connecticut will take over. 1-1 one, one tie, 26 and a half minutes left to go in the second half. Triggering for the Huskies, it'll be Anthony Curtis, junior midfielder, native of Kingston, Jamaica. Feet in front, a little bit too long. Sam Forco, number two for the Huskies, was there. Peters in position, and the pass was too far ahead. There's a look at Ryan Hall. He made a terrific defensive play in the first minute of the second half as he slid in front of the oncoming David Castellanos of Connecticut. The keeper for Syracuse, Anthony Peters, was really out of position on that play, so Hall, coming in to make that sliding stop, saved a goal. Kevin Boyle now in for the Orange men for the first time in this game. He's number 17, junior from Manlius, New York. Played his high school soccer at Christian Brothers Academy. Now they're just they're taking breaks right now, trying to get a little little bit of air. He, um, Kevin, Kevin Boyle had one assist this season. And uh, last year he had uh, one goal against uh, Hartwick. He's majoring in marketing. Connecticut advancing the ball in Syracuse's end. Great job done by the Syracuse defender, Eric Chapman, to get a toe in there. Good lead pass for Sam Forco as one of his teammates tried to set him up in front, but Chapman was there to kick it away. The junior from Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Good hustle on his part. Last year, he, um, he started all 19 games as a defender. 
He's played really well tonight. Yes, he has. Away! The only mistake was that questionable call that set up UConn's Chris Bondi for the game time goal on the penalty kick. And that is the go ahead goal for Connecticut and Damani Ralph. So the Huskies have scored the last two goals, erasing Syracuse's 1 0 lead. To show you a replay, Ralph with the goal. Making it 2-1 Huskies, and now the Orange Men are down to the defending national champs. We'll take a look at it for you one more time here. Tamani's there by himself. Nobody defending him. Knocks in his, knocks in his seventh goal of the season. Came right to him there. Not a whole lot that Anthony Peters could do. Yeah, that was just about fed to him. Yeah. And it was inadvertent. It wasn't actually a, a setup pass. He happened to be in the right place, right time. But that's what makes him a great player. He's able to put himself in the position that allows him to be scoring goals and prov providing assists. His seventh goal, we talked about him as Connecticut's key player tonight on offense before the ball game began. Sixth leading scorer in the Big East Conference entering tonight's play. And that snaps the tides. 2-1 Connecticut. Now we should see Syracuse become a lot more aggressive offensively. And you can see it here as Syracuse has a little bit more adrenaline going down two to one with less than 25 minutes to play in the second half. Yeah, they're gonna need to pick up the pace a little more. You don't wanna force yourself, but at the same time, you wanna be able to be more aggressive, pass uh, more precisely. Mansour Jai will trigger here. And play a great, stronger defense, like right there. Push from behind. On Connecticut, Andrew McLeod, junior Mitty, also transferring to Connecticut from Meridian Community College down in Mississippi. No less than three UConn players have come from that junior college. Yeah, Kevin Boyle gets knocked down from behind. Clearly a foul. Coming out to play it for Connecticut, keeper Brahim Hancock. Well, Kirk Johnson's been, Johnson's been relatively quiet this game. Not a lot of activity from, from him. He entered tonight's game as the leading scorer in the Big East Conference with 10 goals and 24 points on the season, but he has been held in check by the UConn defense. Johnson in a foot race with Sam Forco of the Huskies, and Forco wins the battle. Forco feeds Lyndon Pecarelli. Matched up with Syracuse defender Derek McGeehan, freshman, getting some playing time here in the second half. He's from Grantville, Pennsylvania. In that last play, Kirk, uh, Kirk Johnson was out hustled to the ball. You have to kind of wonder, is he out of sorts today? Is that, did that injury a little earlier shake him up? A lot of time left to go here in the second half. So stamina and energy left a lot in determining who wins this game. Another Syracuse player hits the deck. Boyle again. Junior Kevin Boyle from Manlius, New York, right outside of Syracuse. And he played his high school soccer at Christian Brothers Academy. Well, Boyle tripped up from behind. A little bit of a performance there. Andrew but still McLeod, result, Connecticut coming in. Results in a yellow card against the defender. So we've seen a total of three yellow cards in this game. Two against Connecticut and one against Syracuse. There's a good look at Kevin. Now a junior. Another CBA product. A teammate, Jared Park. Players played for Joe Papaleo at CBA, former All-American goalkeeper at Syracuse. Big crowd on hand for this one. Syracuse and Connecticut. Soccer stadium at the Lampy Complex on the SU Hill is jammed. Great to see a huge crowd on hand for this one. Connecticut, the defending national champions. Both teams nationally ranked. No less than six Big East Conference teams are ranked in the top 25. Just about 1,000 people on hand for this one between Syracuse and Connecticut. 
They would love to see the Orange men tied up on this rush up the field. Near side, it's Kevin Boyle. He drops it off for Johnson. Looking to run a give and go with teammate Matt Torok, broken up nicely by the UConn defense. Shavar Thomas comes away with it. Now, issue's been trying to, they're trying to force it right now. In the, in the first half, they were playing smart. They are passing the ball back when they needed to, resetting themselves. And this time, they're, they're forcing the ball a little more. And I'm sure there's a sense of urgency on their part with, uh, with uh, 21 uh, minutes left in the game. Syracuse looks to reset here. Collected on the near side by Kevin Boyle. Guido Cristofori advancing it now. Connecticut setting itself defensively. Good spacing on defense by the Huskies. Trying to cut down every angle and every passing lane. John Andre drops it back now. Far side it goes for Derek McGeehan. No foul, no foul. Good, good. Andre goes down. Another whistle. That time Anthony Curtis of UConn in on the play. Little fancy footwork there by uh, William uh, William Morsorio. And Raid with a boot. And beyond the reach of Kevin Boyle. We make our way down to 20 minutes to go in regulation. 2-1, Connecticut lead. And these, these players have been running well for about 65, 70 minutes right now. And it's a kind of game that they got to keep dashing making these these 30 yard 40 yard dash it can be wearing it looks at this point that Syracuse is slowly wearing down big momentum shift in the second half Syracuse outscoring Connecticut or out shooting UConn rather in the first half six to two and outscoring the Huskies one nothing in the first half but in the second half Connecticut has scored twice on six shots Syracuse has mounted just one shot on goal since halftime Now some good footwork there and a real good good hustle there. <clears throat> good hustle there on part of uh, Syracuse. Try to try to get that cross pass and hit the goal. Connecticut setting up the defense. The Orange men will attempt the corner. Syracuse's second corner kick of the night. Connecticut has four. A little far. Johnson tried to get ahead on it with that stingy UConn defense. He's able to give Johnson and the Orange men all kinds of trouble right in front of the goal. Syracuse keeps it, though. Connecticut sets up defensively. John Andrade will do the honors in the corner. He's from uh, East Providence, Rhode Island. He's uh, scored uh, the only goal against UConn last year. Great game as the Orange men knocked off the then number one ranked Huskies. one nothing. It's a good play on part of Hancock, bring the ball down safely. And they're taking their time now. If you can see they want to use up the clock, no reason to rush the ball across the field. Long kick up field. Connecticut going with a dump and chase here. Syracuse having to hustle all the way back to defend. Some fresh legs in the game for UConn, number 15, Michael Mordaco. Junior forward out of Dix Hills, New York. There is a look at fresh legs in the game in the second half for the Huskies as they try to protect a two to one lead over the Orange men. Mordaco, it's junior 5'11", not a big guy, but certainly he's got a lot of hustle and a good addition. Kind of give a break for other players. First time we've seen him in this game. Head coach for the Huskies, Ray Reed, changing things up little by little, trying to nurse this two one lead all the way home. Mordaco's had uh, three assists this season so far. We know Christofori trying to make something happen on offense for the Orange Men. Johnson's there. Dumped out high. The Orange Men desperately trying to keep in. Kevin Boyle hoped to keep it in on the near side, but now it's taken away by the Huskies. Here is Damani Ralph with it. He broke the 1-1 tie earlier in the second half, giving his team a 2-1 lead. With it at midfield for the Orange men, Jarrett Park. He scored the lone Syracuse goal. A minute 51 into the game. An outstanding individual effort on the part of Park on that play. 
as he beat the defender, Chris Bondi, one-on-one, -on -one, and then beat the keeper, Raheem Hancock. And you can see the crowd is, yeah, you can see the cameras are shaking because the, uh, the crowd is banging their feet right now in the excitement. Gets another sh another indirect uh, another direct kick. The last yeah. time Andre did the honors, Tad, and he sent it just a little bit too high over the crossbar. What do you think Syracuse ought to do here to try to tie this game up? I think they ought to be shooting for the corner and a high corner, not allowing the uh, the goalie a chance to, to get at. It. Now he's got he's he's got his back to the goal right now. His heels are on the on the line. He's not sure which way they're going to go. He's going to be attempting to take a guess. And he might commend himself to the right or left. Ristafori. That's a great stop. Outstanding save made by Hancock. Get to get up high. Terrific play. And that was a great shot on goal by Christofori. Hancock was able to leap high to the air and make that outstanding stop. 6'3, 165 pounds. Raheem Hancock. That was an outstanding save. Syracuse trying to keep the pressure on here. Christofori keeps it in. Andre once again with a touch back for Christofori, broken up by Connecticut. Christofori's been hustling a lot more in the second half. You can see the uh, the desperation, a little bit of anxiety about being behind one zip with uh, less than well, 15 minutes left. Husky's doing a great job of cutting down the passing lanes, making Syracuse work very, very hard in the offensive end to get anything going in terms of some crisp passing. We'll take a look at that last effort by Syracuse. Guido Cristofori with the shot. And watch this. It actually looked like it hit the uh, save. Looked like it hit the, uh, the top bar. And a little bit of trickery on their part, sending out uh, John Andrade to do it. And instead, uh, giving a shot by Hall. Hancock, Sky. And he actually may have received some help from the crossbar, but he was up there as well. The Orange men trying to keep in. Less than 15 minutes to play in regulation. Syracuse trails Connecticut 2-1. Huskies perhaps with a chance. A couple of players heading up the field. And the play broken up from behind. Looks like another penalty shot. Eric Chapman coming in from behind. And that knocked Damani Ralph to the turf. He had a player to his right on the near wing hustling with him up the field, but it was Chapman who came in from behind to take down Ralph before he could make the pass or take the shot. We'll see it again. What do you think? That looked like all ball to me. Looks like he got the ball and then he tripped over his feet afterwards. If you watch him, he gets his foot into it. It's a good slide tackle. Gets the ball, then trips. But the referees can't catch everything. Unfortunately, they gave, he might have given him the benefit of the doubt instead of giving a penalty kick, giving him a direct kick outside the penalty box. So they're allowed to make a wall in front of the, uh, front of the goal. And that wall is able to deflect the shot. Leaping high in the air, Anthony Peters, UConn player, collides with him, and that results in the whistle. We'll see it again. Watch the UConn Husky player Smack right into the Syracuse keeper, Anthony Peters. Keeper's allowed to bring that down. He can't get knocked out of the way. Right there, the whistle was blown by the official, and that stopped the play. Another Syracuse player goes down. This time it's John Andre. Very physical play here in the second half. Both teams playing aggressively. Syracuse knew, knows that they have to score here just to get a, just to get a tie. We'll see the last collision. Watch Andre go down. Locked up with Andrew McLeod of yeah. Connecticut. Not much of a uh, not much of a foul there, but enough for the referee to call it. And like goal and like goal kickers in football, uh, for, uh, uh, they're allowed to. No, they're not allowed to, but they will often make make a performance to get the ball. Syracuse resetting the offense now. Ryan Hall sends it ahead. Huskies looking to break it up. Ball trickles back toward midfield. 
Michael Mordaco there for Connecticut. And now with a toe on it for the Huskies, Anthony Curtis. Wind picks up, very comfortable breeze here at the soccer stadium on the SU Hill tonight. Beautiful evening for soccer in mid-October. Temperature in the 60s, huge crowd on hand, a thousand people here for this matchup between the Orange Men and the defending national champions. And they have gotten their money's worth tonight. It's been a great game, tight throughout. Yeah, UConn's showing what they are. They're a great team. They didn't, uh, they didn't fall back. They didn't uh, start uh, crying about not being able to score in that first half, and they made a, made a good comeback here. Since this game began, it's Man. either been tied or it's been a one-goal game. Connecticut is on top now, two to one. And time is starting to run out on the Orange Men, heading down toward 11 minutes to go in the second half. And Tad, in a situation like this, down a goal with the 10 minute mark, fast approaching, what do you do in terms of strategy to try to get that game time goal? Well, you're gonna watch the de defenders play up a little more than they normally do. Unfortunately, when, when they do that, it allows the forwards to get breakaways like it, uh, as you watched earlier when you watched uh, uh, Damani Ralph take that break. Huskies looking for insurance on this trip up the field. Ralph with a good feed, great save made by Anthony Peters. That was a fantastic save. Stretched his body across to the right. Andrew McLeod took the shot. Ralph with a terrific feed. And Peters he got a two on one comes situation. up with a huge save. Syracuse in transition, here is Johnson. Boots with the right foot, and it's taken by Brahim Hancock. Well, you can hear it hit, you can hear it hit, hit Hancock right in the chest. It was a solid kick. Now here's the save made by Anthony Peters on the last trip up the field by Connecticut. That was a great pass. Peters is able to stretch out for that. Peters saved the goal there. Would have given Connecticut a three to one lead virtually insurmountable against the defending national champs with less than 10 minutes to go in the second half. It's still a one goal UConn lead. Syracuse looking to put more pressure on Raheem Hancock. Whistle stops play on the near side, 9.45 to go in regulation. And our cameras caught that. Pushing and shoving and going on shoving. between Michael Mordaco, Connecticut. And it's still going on and right Ari now. Schneider of Syracuse. And he pushes Eric Chapman. Now the ref should be looking at that right now. Mordaco is begging for a penalty call. Absolutely. Finally, the official spots it. And he gets his own yellow card. Fourth yellow card of the night issued in this game. Three against Connecticut, one against Syracuse. Actually, in my estimation, that, that was away from the ball. Had nothing to do with the play. The ref could have actually given him a red card, tossed him out of the game for that. He wanted to receive a penalty. He was begging for it. Well, it looks like he's being taken off right now by his, uh, by his coach. It makes good sense. Yeah. Give him a chance to calm down. Ray Reed, head coach of the Huskies, pulling Michael Mordaco from the game. Two to one, Connecticut. Huskies looking to extend the lead. That was dangerous. Boot came from the near corner. Andrew McLeod. Peters got a hand on it, and it ricocheted off the crossbar. Now it bounces out high. Syracuse trying to clear it out. Nine minutes left to go in the second half. Ball comes free to the near side. We'll take a look at that again. Now the kick will come from deep in the right corner. Andrew McLeod with it. Watch where this ends up. Off the hand and off the crossbar. And Tad, that was Fantastic. very dangerous. He was able to just bring the ball up just enough, just enough to get it out of the goal. Good break for the orange man. Yes, it was. He had to stretch for that. Yeah. Peters isn't the tallest guy. He's 5'8". He's 5'8", but the crossbar is only 8 feet, so he should be able to reach that. Yeah, by comparison, Connecticut's keeper, Raheem Hancock, is 6'3". Yeah, he has a little more reach there. Sure. Make no mistake, Peters has played an outstanding game tonight. Yes, he has. There's a look at Syracuse's senior keeper. Seven, Seven saves, saves in today. this matchup tonight with the defending national champs. 
six of those coming since halftime. And the big crowd here at the soccer stadium making a lot of noise. You can see the refs making a note as to what's going on. They have to keep track of who they're giving yellow cards to in case they need to issue a red card. Yeah, it's easy to lose track tonight with all the yellow cards issued against Connecticut. This has been a very physical game in this heated rivalry between Syracuse and Connecticut. These two teams have played at least once a season every year since 1982. And they've met in postseason play in the Big East tournament a number of times. UConn leads the series with uh, Syracuse University. But they weren't able to beat them in the uh, regular season last year. Back into the game for Connecticut, their fleet-footed freshman midfielder, Jose Sura, number three. He can fly. If he gets loose on a breakaway, Syracuse could be in big trouble. There's a look at David Castellanos of Connecticut. See the face guard protecting his nose. He's a senior from Philadelphia. Transfer from Mercer Community College. As there are a number of JUCO transfers on this Connecticut roster for head coach Ray Reed, lost a number of seniors from last year's national championship team, and he had to replenish that roster in a hurry. And it's paid off here in 2001. UConn is unbeaten in Big East play at 4-0. Now, uh, Derek McGeehan just came in for defense. He is a, must have been a very really good player in high school. He had 30 goals, 24 assists. He's from Pennsylvania. He's going to be playing up a little more than he usually might. You can see he's, he's, he's way past the midfield. You got Chapman sitting in the back. Syracuse needs one more goal for the tie. Time is not on the Orange's side, though, as we head down towards seven minutes to play in the second half. Dropping back for it, Ryan Hall. Eludes a Connecticut defender, David Castellanos. Nice individual effort, but he was helped out by his teammate Sam Forco, who came in. There's a look at Sam, senior out of Houston, Texas. It was great footwork on Ryan Hall's part, but he needed to give up the ball just a little earlier than that. He had uh, the defense collapsing in on him, so it was a, a one on two, one on three situation. Under seven minutes to go in the second half. Connecticut still up by one, two to one. Cristofori sent it for Johnson too far. Kirk has been held in check. Leading goal scorer in the Big East Conference. Heading into tonight's game with 10 tallies on the season, a total of 24 points. That also leads the lead. Well, you can see the frustration on Kirk Johnson's face. He knows he, uh, he can play better than that. He wants to play better than that. I'm sure he's looking for that opportunity to place himself. But you got to give credit to the UConn defense for keeping him in check. Good job by the Huskies to clear it out. David Castellanos with the boot. Now the Huskies will try to dump it up the field. Ball trickles free beyond the sideline. Another minute elapses off the second half clock. Less than six minutes to go in the second half now. As we watch Chris Bondi, he's not playing up anymore. He's not bringing himself up like he did before. Whistle blows as Syracuse defender Eric Chapman tripped up another UConn Husky. Chapman's throwing himself at the ball, trying to stop, stop the uh, forwards. Once again, Damani Ralph. Yeah, clearly, clearly didn't have any ball and was knocked uh, Damani Ralph down. Fortunately, it was not within the penalty box. Chapman, one of the top defenders on the Syracuse roster, junior, out of Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Connecticut taking its sweet time here late in the second half. 5.15 left to play in regulation. Huskies with a 2-1 to one lead. Sure, they want to use up as much of the clock right now as they can. Yep. Orangemen break that play up easily. And through the course of the game, it might be just several seconds here, several seconds there. But through, uh, to the end of the game, they might, they might possibly be able to knock off a minute by just simply wasting time by, right. by taking their feet, by taking their dragging their feet. Down to 4.45 to go in the second half. And you have to keep one eye on the clock this late in the game. Absolutely. Connecticut coming back from a 1-0 deficit to score twice in this second half and claim the lead for the first time. Yeah, Syracuse isn't taking their time with passes right now. They're moving, they're trying to move the ball quickly because they know they're limited on the amount of time they have. Castellanos and Johnson hooked up on the near side. Christofori comes over. 
He takes it away from the Orange Men now. Tries to elude a Connecticut defender. Matched up with Sam Forco. Excellent footwork by Christopher there. Had two defenders shadowing him. Yeah, they're double teaming him when he, when he gets along the sideline like that. And if you watch him, he tries to move the sideline because that, that's the open part of the field. You're not going to have anybody coming from one side of you. But he's got to give up the ball a little sooner if he wants to be able to utilize that, that double teaming on him. UConn ball, less than four minutes to play in regulation. Throwing on the near side for Forca. He finds Lyndon Pecarelli. Chapman there again. Pecarelli keeps his feet and another whistle. Yeah, that could have easily been called for a trip. I'm surprised the ref waited this long to call it. We need three! We need three! And now we have the standing around that Connecticut is employing here, Tad, as you said, sure. milking that clock. Two. Down to three and a half two. minutes to go in regulation. And you're gonna see you're gonna see more of that because the defenders are coming up a little more in, in an attempt to pass the ball close to the midfielders and to the forwards. And when they when they bring themselves up that far, they're taking the chance of having someone do a breakaway on him, as you just saw with Chapman. Needed to do that, needed to do the slide tackle. Unfortunately, he uh, tripped them up without getting the ball. The Orangemen need to get the ball up the field in a hurry. That pass really in no man's land. Two teams battling for possession at midfield. Right now, you're gonna watch UConn just pop the ball around, take their time, pass it back if they have to. They know they got the clock on their on their side. Guido Cristofori has it. But this, the tight ends can change, can change very quickly, as we watched in the beginning of the game. And there they are, shuffling slowly, yep. using up the clock. Less than two and a half minutes to play. In regulation, Connecticut's still up two to one. Near corner it comes for David Castellanos. Trying to get away from Syracuse's Ryan Hall. Castellanos looking to feed in front. And the insurance goal is booted home by the Huskies. Damani Rao gives UConn a three to one lead with only two minutes and four seconds to play in regulation. We well, could add that to his list. He's got eight, eight goals now, and then Castellano has two assists. Second goal of the night for Rao. This is just out hustle by Castellanos. Passes it, great cross pass across the front. Damani Ralph is right there. Beautiful feed. This is just beautiful. Just, this is picture perfect, just like out of a book. Absolutely. He threaded the needle to use that cliche. Yeah, add one more to the scoring leaders list there. Damani Park. Top six players in the Big East Conference. He had two more, two more in this game. Just puts him up in the rankings. He's done a great job of uh, covering for, uh, for this, uh, Quaylar. Stepped in there and he showed himself. Less than two minutes to go in the second half. Three to one, Connecticut. The Orange men need a quick goal on this trip up the field. They have any hopes whatsoever of tying this game up. It's going to be very difficult. Sure. And it goes back. It goes back to what I said earlier about being in the being positioning yourself. It's not simply just being in the right place at the right time, but getting yourself in the right place at the right time. Shot on goal, attempted by Syracuse's Derek McGee and broken up by the UConn defense. The wide shot. You can see the defense has moved up very far. Chapman just sitting back as a, as a sweeper to pick up anybody who happens to swing by. Connecticut milking the second half clock. Now Raheem Hancock will give it a strong kick away from his goal as we head down toward the one minute mark. Time left to go in the second half. Three to one Huskies. In the first half, Connecticut did not really look all that impressive, Tad, but since halftime, they have come out in the second half all fired up. They tied the game very early in the second half, and since that game tying goal scored on a penalty kick by Chris Bondi, two goals scored by Damani Ralph, have given the Huskies a seemingly insurmountable three to one lead. Sure, and that, and that footwork by, by Castellanos in the last shot, being able to 
provide that cross pass to Damani Ralph. Just uh, clinched it for the for the UConn for the UConn team. So it looks like the Huskies will remain unbeaten in Big East Conference play. They'll go to five and zero. Oh. Yeah, not unless a miracle occurs in the next uh, 18 seconds. Defending national champions will drop Syracuse to three and three in the league, six and four overall. While the UConn Huskies will see their Big East Conference mark improve to five and zero, oh, and they'll move to eight two and two on the season. Head coach of the UConn Huskies, Ray Reed, watching his team come from down. Trailing 1-0 at halftime. They scored three times in the second half. And we saw a game, Tad, that was very aggressive. The two teams battling each other hard, especially in the second half. A lot of players going down on the turf. We saw some very physical action. But when the dust clears, Connecticut has a 3-1 come from behind win. It was a great come from behind. So the UConn Huskies come from behind to defeat the Orange Men 3-1 here at the Soccer Stadium on the SU Hill tonight. Great to have you with us here on Super Sports tonight, and we will keep you abreast of all the goings on up on the SU Hill as this month of October continues. Check this out. Five more big games to show you here on Super Sports. Women's Volleyball against Villanova. You'll see that game on October 15th at 8 p.m. Then on October 19th at 8, you'll see the women's soccer team meet Dartmouth. Then the Syracuse football Orange men take on the Temple Owls in the Carrier Dome, and you will see that game on October 21st at 7 p.m. Then it's women's field hockey meeting Quinnipiac on the 22nd at 8 p.m. And once again, the women's volleyball team meets Colgate. You'll see that game here on Super Sports and Time Warner 13 on October 24th at 8 p.m. as well. For Tad Fundalinski, our producer, director, Mark Ballard, and our entire Super Sports crew, this is Ted DeLuca saying good night from the soccer stadium on the SU Hill. Tough loss for the Orange men. Connecticut wins it 3-1 to one over the Cuse. This has been a presentation of Time Warner 13. Great.